my little goslings. Welcome to my random thoughts on Thursdays, and this week I'm going to be talking about the Doctor Who 50th anniversary special. Warning, there may be spoilers. So, if you follow Doctor Who at all, you know that this Saturday is the 50th anniversary special, which is going to be simulcast live um, across the world in pretty much any country that um, shows Doctor Who now is going to show it uh, live in, in whatever country you're in, um, if you're already seeing it. Like, we in the U.S., we get it on BBC America. And uh, for those of you who want to know the showtimes, it's going to be at 2.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means Central is going to be at 1.50, Mountain is going to be at 12.50, and Pacific is going to be at 11.50 p.m. Uh, sorry, a.m. Sorry. <laughs> it's like p.m., p.m., a.m. Um, okay, so that's the times that it's going to show, uh, if you uh, had any, uh, if you were wondering about that. And then they're also doing a 3D version, well I think they're doing 2D and 3D, but they're doing it in movie theaters as well. So instead of watching it on TV, you can also do it in the movie theater. Um, I don't know if it's going to be simulcast there or just different show, show times for that. So there's, there's that as well. Uh, and obviously... You know, for anyone who watches my vlogs, if you've, you know, watched me at all, you should know by now that at the very least I'm a geek and a sci-fi fan. I'm definitely a Doctor Who fan, um, you know, and I'll, I'll put a photo up here of me in my uh, full Doctor Who costume. You can see I've got my scarf on right now. I crocheted this myself, and yeah, I know it's supposed to be knitted. I don't knit, I crochet, but, and I also have, you can see my TARDIS um, sweatshirt hoodie here uh, for the occasion, and uh, yes, I'm excited. Um, and I said there might be spoilers in this video because I want to talk a little bit about um, some of the stuff that's been talked about online, some of the speculation about what's going to happen. I know everyone was probably shocked at the end of last season uh, when they had introducing John Hurt as the Doctor. And it's like, what? Where does this come from? Especially since... Pretty much we all know that Peter Capaldi is going to be the 12th Doctor and that Matt Smith is leaving the role after the Christmas special this year. So he's not going to be the 12th Doctor. So it's like, uh, so what, what, what is he? Where does he fit into the story? Um, anyway, so yeah, so Peter Capaldi is the 12th Doctor, so John Hurt's not the 12th Doctor, so where does that leave us? Well, if you haven't seen it yet, um, the BBC uh, put out a little six minute video on YouTube called The Night of the Doctor, and I'm going to put a link right here. So if you haven't seen The Night of the Doctor yet, click on the link, watch it. It's only six minutes, then come back and, and we'll uh, continue talking about this. So if you haven't watched it, go click, click, click on it now. Go on, click on it. I'll wait. Okay, so if you've just finished watching The Night of the Doctor, and you know that the 50th anniversary special is titled The Day of the Doctor. Obviously, there's a connection there. If you didn't recognize the actor in The Night of the Doctor, especially if you're um, what's affectionately known as a New Who fan, and you've only seen um, the Doctors number 9, 10, and 11, um, basically Chris Eccleston, um, David Tennant, and Matt Smith, if you're only familiar with those Doctors, um, the Doctor that you just saw in The Night of the Doctor is Paul McGann. He was number 8. Uh, he was in the two-hour Fox made-for-TV movie that was supposed to be a pilot for um, a new Doctor Who series um, that was supposed to launch back in the 90s, but that TV movie um, didn't get the ratings that Fox wanted, so they never went forward with the series. Which is why, even though technically it's can he does he counts as number eight as canon, but you know, besides. Um, that movie, the only other place you're going to um, get any adventures with uh, the Eighth Doctor are going to be on the Big Finish audio productions. So if you've never uh, done the Big Finish audio productions, go Google them, um, and I'll, maybe I'll put a link below as well. Uh, they have these full episodes, Doctor Who episodes, with um, Tom Baker has done some of them, um, Unfortunately, uh, Sarah Jane Smith, um, uh, Elizabeth Slayton, was supposed to do some with Tom Baker, but she passed away just before uh, she was set to start recording those, which is a shame. 
um, but he has done several with some of his other former companion uh, actors and things. And uh, yeah, there, there's a whole bunch of them done by a number. I think Colin Baker's done some. I think maybe even Peter Davison has done some. I could be wrong. Um, I'm not very good with audio stories, unfortunately. I'm a very visual person. So I haven't really listened to a lot of them. Uh, but from everything I've heard is that they're amazing and that they a lot of uh, folks who've listened to the Paul McGann ones absolutely love The Eighth Doctor because of it. Um, but I'm, I'm excited. I've always liked Paul McGann, even though it was only that two-hour movie that I saw him in, and I was so excited to see him in The Night of the Doctor. But I want to kind of break things down a little bit. So you saw that he takes that elixir and he regenerates, and you kind of hear John Hurt's voice at the end there, um, as in, like, he becomes whatever John Hurt is. Uh, the War Doctor is what they're kind of calling him. And so... Is he the ninth? Is he really the ninth doctor? The it it kind of goes it kind of gets a little um, weird and mixed up and I'm hoping they explain it well in um, the day of the doctor episode because it's like wait what's going on? Um, but I had a feeling that John Hurt was going to bridge the gap between number eight and number nine just by uh, based on the costume he's wearing. So here's a picture of the John Hurt character in costume. And you see he's got a leather jacket on and underneath it is sort of like a pseudo-Victorian like a vest and that kind of thing going on underneath it. Um, and if you look at the original Eighth Doctor's costume when he first appears, he's in, and you can see it here, uh, in full Victorian look uh, with the vest and everything. And so somehow at some point during the um, Time War he loses the fancy coat and, and adopts a uh, leather coat, but he keeps the Victorian style underneath and apparently John Hurt's doctor, uh, whatever he is, um, keeps that same outfit. So even though he regenerates into this war doctor, um, he still kind of keeps whatever the costume was that number eight had near the end of his cycle. Um, and what's interesting is that Chris Eccleston continues to wear that leather coat because it's if you look at John Hurt's coat it's very similar to the one that Chris wears. So there's definitely a continuity there between uh, Paul McGann's doctor, John Hurt's doctor, and Chris Eccleston's doctor. Um, and it kind of ties everything together and um, I think you know the, the whole thing there is kind of brilliant because as most people know, um, David Tennant and Matt Smith are going to be in The Day of the Doctor, but Chris Eccleston is not. Instead, it's going to be John Hurt. And the main reason for that is because Chris Eccleston completely refuses to have anything to do with Doctor Who since he left the show. In fact, he left early. He, I think he was meant to do a full two or three seasons of Doctor Who, but he had some dispute with whatever, and decided to be a diva and just leave. And ever since then, he's been, you know, from a lot of interviews that I've seen, he's he said good things about the fans, but he said nasty things about the show in general, doesn't like the show, was never a fan of the show to begin with, um, refuses to answer any questions about why he's not being uh, a part of the 50th anniversary, other than he just wasn't interested. Uh, the BBC themselves have said that he was asked to come back and he said no. Um, and to be perfectly honest, it really puts me off of him as a person. Um, I still love that first season of Doctor Who uh, when they brought him in as the Ninth Doctor. I love his performance. I love his take on the character. I love his chemistry with Rose and Captain Jack and everything. You know, he did a really brilliant job with the role. But because of his attitude since he left the show, and because he left the show early on purpose, because he just was being a diva about something, um, it really turns me off of him in general. And I'm actually kind of glad that he decided not to be part of the 50th, because, you know, who needs that kind of negativity around, to be perfectly honest with you. So I know a lot of people are like, where's number nine? Why is number nine not included? He doesn't want to be. That's why. He's turned his back on the show, and in my opinion, he's turned his back on the fans as well. And he just doesn't give a darn. And, well, it is what it is. And the little, little mini rant there. But, um, at any rate, I think we've kind of filled in some of the mystery of who John Hurt is there. Uh, but it's like, 
there's still, it raises so many more questions as to, okay, who the heck is he? Is he number, is he the real number nine or is he not? It's just like, what happened? Um, a lot, another little tidbit real quick is, you know, that the fact that John Hurt's older and Paul McGann was younger, and of course he took the elixir so he might have changed his face, but he changes his face into something, I mean, we don't get to see exactly what he looks like, but he definitely looks like a younger person still, and John Hurt's older, and a lot of people are like, well, the doctor doesn't age. It's like, well, actually he does. Um, you know, for anyone who is a longtime fan of Doctor Who, you all know that the first Doctor, William Hartnell, was an older gentleman. Um, the Doctor at that point was somewhere between two and three hundred years old, and he looked like an older person. Um, still fairly spry on his feet. I mean, the actor himself was in his sixties, I believe, when he began the role, and was, you know, you know, spry enough. I mean, he was he was definitely acting the grandfather role uh, on on the thing. But, you know, he obviously was, wasn't was born that way. He obviously aged. And then um, another example is David Tennant when he was a prisoner of the Master. Um, I forget the name of the episode. Sorry. I'm, I am a fan, but I don't remember episode titles very much. But when uh, the Master uh, kind of fast-forwards uh, David Tennant's aging process, or number 10's aging process, um, without triggering him to regenerate, until he's that shrunken little, you know, he, he gets so old that he's like the shrunken little thing because he's at that point, I think he, he fast forward his age to like be millions of years old. I mean, to the point where he's practically unrecognizable. But it shows that within a regeneration cycle, a doctor can age. I think um, Gallifreyans or Time Lords in general age at a much slower rate than humans do. And so he could live two, three, four hundred years and still not look much older than he did before. And he generally regenerates before um, the aging really starts to set into his face, uh, into, into how his appearance is. Um, and so that leads one to believe that, that the doctor doesn't, re uh, doesn't age um, uh, before he regenerates, which, you know, it, I think it actually makes sense that they would actually age. And so technically they could live, I don't know, a thousand years in each regeneration until they get so old that it's like, okay, I'm ready to feel younger again. Um, and it has been established that Time Lords generally regenerate um, on a whim. Like they, they can choose to regenerate. Um, it, we see that with uh, his one companion, Romana, who was a Time Lady. And we actually have two, two variants, um, Romana 1 and Romana 2, with Romana number 1, uh, being, you know, long dark hair, rather tall, uh, statuesque kind of woman, and then Romana number two uh, played, oh, I forget who, again, I'm very bad with names, but she was smaller, slighter, with, with thinner, um, straight uh, blonde hair. And so, and she actually went and uh, stepped in and out from the back of the TARDIS and changed her appearance several times before she settled on a single one. Um, <laughs> so basically, unless you're, uh, unless a, a, a Time Lord is, you know, on the verge of death and therefore regenerates, which is what happens to the Doctor, um, primarily because he's always putting himself into dangerous situations, um, the Time Lords that lived on Gallifrey and basically didn't put themselves in danger, um, they just kind of like eventually got bored of you know, who they were, maybe they were getting too old or something, and then they would trigger their own regeneration. So um, that's something else to keep in mind is that John Hurt, like, they, exactly what the elixir does in turn the, the war doctor, is it the eighth doctor? We're do, still got to figure that out. But John Hurt is just an aged version of that doctor. Um, and and, and I, I'm pretty sure that that's the case. Um, as to exactly who he is and how he fits into the lineup of the Doctor, well, we'll have to wait until Saturday to find out. All right, I think I've battled enough about Doctor Who now. If you're not a fan, um, you know, what are you a fan of? Uh, are, there, are you into sci-fi at all? What kind of sci-fi shows do you like? And if you are a fan, who's your favorite Doctor? Are you a New Who fan and you only like 9, 10, and 11? And you have a favorite among those three? Have you seen any of the classic Doctors? Um, if you're a classic fan, uh, which of them are, are your favorites? 
Um, for me personally, I mean, you know, the scarf I think should tell it all. Tom Baker has always been my favorite. I met the man personally at a con back in 1990. He is an absolutely lovely gentleman. He is a fabulous storyteller. I loved all seven of his seasons. Um, he, to me, is the quintessential doctor. He is the embodiment of the doctor. He is always going to be my favorite. Um, I definitely like David Tennant of the new ones, but to be perfectly honest, I like every single doctor to some degree. Um, it's a shame that Colin Baker uh, was the victim of kind of a bad storyline, unfortunately, and was treated rather badly by the BBC in general. And yet he still isn't being anywhere near the diva that Chris Eccleston is, just saying. Um, anyway, but I like I like all of them. I like I really do, and and it's my, it's been a favorite show of mine for such a long time. I've been watching since the seventies, and yeah, I I can't say that there is a single Doctor that I don't like. But Tom Baker's always gonna be my number one favorite. All right, well thank you so much for watching this week. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and uh, please like this video, and uh, please remember to embrace randomness. Until next week, take care. Bye-bye.